Hey now, ladies and jerks, it's your boy, CHH, uh, older, tireder, but still here doing the show, because if we didn't do this show, you guys would lose your fucking minds, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, and as you guys are listening to this, Christian is 30 years old, so... Yeah. You know what, dude? I was I was thinking about that. It really hit me today, to be honest with you. And I was like, "Is it a big deal?" And I'm like, "You know what? It's not a big deal. I mean, I'm I'm okay with where I'm at in life. I don't have any kids yet. Um, but other than that, not that I need to have kids, but like other than that, I think I'm doing okay. I haven't changed who I am, and that was that's honestly always been my biggest fear is to stop is to is for some reason to stop liking the shit that I've I know I love, and I've never done that. As a matter of fact, the app the exact opposite happens as I get older. I get more into the shit that I love. So that's just you know what's the point in being upset about getting older? You can't fucking do anything about it. Nah, man. And the cliche is true. It is just a number, man. You're as old as you feel. I mean, I'm 27, but I, you know, half the time feel like I'm 18 or 13. So, still, you know, I still feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I still feel that way. And, you know, it is what it is. But I was, you know, when we were setting up, you said you're, you wanted to have your, your baseball on the background. I'm just shocked you actually like some, a home team. I didn't expect that from you. <laughs> Yeah, I tell this story. People ask me all the time, like, wait, so you're a Steelers fan and a Cincinnati Reds fan? How does that work? I didn't get into baseball until I was 13. And growing up, my uh, my best my best friend, Tommy, was uh, – I've talked about him many times on this podcast. He's a diehard Reds fan. His, uh, him and his dad are. And I started going to games with him when I was like 12, 13 years old, and I had never really tried to get into baseball up to that point. And going to games, I was like – I like this environment. This, this is cool. And, you know, hanging out with him, we just would watch baseball games and he was a Reds fan. So I would just root for the Reds. And before you knew it, I was sucked into the Reds, a team that just always finds ways to let you down. So sometimes I wish that I, I didn't get into it, but I did. Yeah. We had a triple A league back in new Orleans. We had a team called the Zephyrs. I don't know if you ever, for, for some bizarre reason, if you've ever heard of that, probably not, but they're like triple a, and I would see guys that I remember they had a big, they had a big send off for one guy that was going to play for, I think he got drafted to the Astros back in 2002 or something, but it was fun. I mean, it was like being at an MLB game. That was fun. I used to, what I remember the most was getting dip and dots and you would get the dip and dots in the baseball helmets and you could pick your yep. team whenever you wanted. And I used to collect all of them. I used to have, I lost them in Katrina, but dude, dip and dots were like so good. Oh yeah. I, I, I haven't, I have never found them around ever again. I guess that's where you get them as stadiums and games and shit. I don't know. We have, um, uh, you can buy them at like the grocery store here in Ohio, but, uh, you also no shit. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy them at the grocery store, but, uh, they're most popular here at like Kings Island. Um, you know, you what is that again? Island. It's an amusement park. Um, that's right. That's right. Like, like Cedar Point type. I mean, it's actually owned by the same company. Um, yeah, you go there, man. You pay eight bucks for a small dip and dots. Yeah. Yeah. You really live in the dream. Yeah. You know, it finally, ha it finally happened. I got a message this morning. I, know, I don't recognize the channel name or whatever, whoever this person is. They messaged me and I didn't respond, but I, I I'm responding now <laughs> to whoever this person was on the show. I finally got a message. They said, Hey Christian, um, I've been a viewer for a long time and I've enjoyed the podcast as of late, but I've got to be honest, the Halloween hate has really started to piss me off and I'm, I'm unsubscribing and stuff. And I want to say like, dude, I'm fucking joking. Like they don't get it. Like it's tattooed on me. It's a joke. And I thought we were doing so good. I thought every, like most for the most part, everybody like got it. And they're like, this is Christian Stick now. He likes to make fun of Halloween. You, people yeah, know guys, love the, it. the dichotomy here is obvious. I'm like the Halloween guy. So obviously Christian's shtick is to give me a hard time on this show about Halloween. You know, and I, if you're if you're that person, I'm not mad at you. And I know you're not going to stop watching. People always say that people when people say they are going to stop watching, they watch even harder. I know this because I'm that person. There was there was a saying in on the movie Private Parts. Um, 
which was the how the story about Howard Stern. Great movie. And when the people at, in New York, the New York radio stations got the ratings, they couldn't believe it. And the, the expression was, you know, the average person listens to the average Stern fan listens to Howard Stern for 35 minutes. And the average Stern hater listens to people to Stern for like an hour and 35 minutes. And they were like, that doesn't make any sense. Why? And he goes, well, the people that love Stern keep listening and say, I can't wait to see what he says next. And the people that hate Stern listen and say, cause I got to see what he's going to say next. So it's like yeah. one of those things, like it's the same thing as like, you could, you could talk about it from like politics too. you know, people on both sides, they hate certain networks, but they can't stop watching them because they want to talk shit about certain networks. It's like, damn. You know, yeah, but, uh, how are you going to get content if you don't watch the shit you hate? That way you can, make, yeah. you can, that, that's, that's 101. Before we, obviously tonight, if you're listening, we're doing a, I ask you guys for some questions. Mm -hmm. I think Nick did too. So we'll answer questions tonight. Kind of like last time where we just bullshit and talk about. Whatever. Well, Christian, I, I want to ask you before we get into the, the meat and potatoes here. Did you see the alternate ending of evil dead that Fede Alvarez posted on Twitter yesterday? Yeah. It was like a what 10 15 second clip or something. It, it was it was originally written longer but they didn't film the whole thing because it was supposed to like to, he posted the script to it was the entity was supposed to go through the cabin and pick her up like it did with Ash and it was going to like throw her up into the air and like take her up through the trees and then she was going to explode in midair and blood was going to fly like everywhere but Sam Raimi said no don't do that she's been through enough so he didn't do it. They only filmed the entity like coming at her, but I thought it was cool. I did think it was cool to see. I was like, oh, that's that nice homage. I'm know? shocked he had the I'm shocked he had the the legal right to do that. I mean, I figured the studio owns all that footage after they finish filming something. Yeah, but you know, with how involved Bruce and Sam are with this franchise, I would assume with their permission, he probably can. I mean, they they produce every movie, so I was I was surprised by that when I saw it. I don't know. I guess I would. I, I'm fine with the way that movie ends, but any anything cool next year I could see from that film. I mean, more power. You know. Nah, man. Nah, I was gonna. I was gonna lose my shit if the script said that it like picked her up in the air and took her into medieval times, and there she was with Ash. Oh, that would have been like, awesome. I would have been like, "What the fuck?" That's probably yeah. there was probably a conversation about that. Yeah. At least you know. Um. So. Let's comment on this for a while. People are fucking shocked and amazed. I do. The more we get through this, show, I, mean, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but the more we do the show, the more just like aggravated I am in, in life. Uh, not at the show, but like I, <laughs> I just get more pissed off. People are fucking shocked and amazed that the monsters is rated PG. Are you oh, kidding me? God. <clears throat> yeah universal was going to give rob zombie a family friendly premise and idea and story and say hey rob go have your skull fucking way with it like no dude it's a lot of people that were i saw somebody on twitter basically say like shocked and confused how rob zombie was able to make this movie without having skull fucking it you know like I, I, and here's the thing that sucks it's not rob zombie defending because believe me I'm not a Rob Zombie defender. He's certainly done stuff I don't like, especially those god awful remix albums he does. Oh, but yeah. I mean, did you not see fucking Lords of Salem? That movie doesn't have that much cursing in it, for God's no. sakes. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's like it's like imagine your your universe. Like imagine you're a Universal and you're the person that's gonna go meet Rob Zombie to pitch him doing mon the monsters. And you're uh, not a Rob Zombie fan, and you think all he does is say, you know, uh, skull fuck this and skull fuck that. Imagine you show up to his house, and Rob's like, hey, come in the kitchen. Just watch out for all my Munsters memorabilia from the original show and head my way. Like, you're still going to think he, like, what are, what are you guys talking about? I, I, no, they, I just they feel like... No the people that call me and you and other uh, some the people that call us Rob Zombie defenders are equally or as more belligerent in their hatred for Rob Zombie and I think that they can't fucking admit it like yes I'm, I'm a Rob Zombie fan do I praise everything he does of course not I just don't talk I talk about the stuff I like but the people that shit on us for being fans are just as belligerent in their hatred the guy could could solve world Fuck! The guy could fix cancer. Yeah, but I'm sure he skull fucked a few people to get. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. 
Except yeah, for how, the rejects, but I mean, yeah, how dumb would you feel if if the cure for cancer cancer was skull fucking people? Then you then you'd feel real dumb. But I, I'll I'll take it a step further, Christian. I think that the people that hate on Rob Zombie are more belligerent than the people that love Rob Zombie. I genuinely believe that these mother. The, I'll watch my language here because I don't want to do it, drop too many f bombs. But these people will use him as a barometer of bad. And that is really annoying. Like when someone would be like, you hear it all the time, watch enough YouTube and or podcasts, whatever. And you'll hear, it's not like Rob Zombie level trashy. Like people will say stuff like that all the time. And I'm like, you know what? It gets to a point where it's just like, this guy clearly lives rent free in your head for some reason. And, and I, I feel bad for you because is it that, you can't believe he's as successful as he is, but he makes such like depraved out there movies. Like there are directors like people forget Wes Craven made some really messed up movies back in the day. I mean, really messed. Go watch the original last house on the left or the original, the Hills have eyes and tell me that shit is not depraved. And people exploited. were running out of the theater. Back. I mean, granted yes. it's, it's relative to the time, but still, I mean, people were fucking <laughs> passing out and leaving the theater. And that was yeah. before exorcist. Yep. So you it's know. just like the hatred. Yeah. The hatred for Rob Zombie is just so dumb. I mean, he wanted to be a modern exploitative kind of filmmaker. He, he loved guys like Craven and, and, and emulates a lot of those things. If Rob, if the, Rob's movies came out in the late seventies, early eighties, you would not hear the shit you hear about him now. I mean, you just wouldn't, you wouldn't, but the times have changed. So people don't like movies to be that edgy anymore. Mainstream audiences don't like that. But regardless of that, dude, of course, it was going to be PG. At the worst, it was going to be PG-13. At the worst. Rob Zombie, I'm sure, too, this is a universal property, a very beloved universal property. I would venture to say there are probably multiple writers uh, involved in the script for this. And that's another thing. thing. Did he even write the fucking movie? Uh, I, I kn It says written and directed by Rob Zombie when he, like, but all of his movies say that. Uh, is this how much do you write when it's already an existing ip you know what i mean like Dude, i i honestly i'm so, like i can't wait to see this movie because it's a pg rob zombie movie i mean yep. are you joking like i think that's so cool uh whether i like it or not is as another thing i'm a monsters fan my, my uncle used to make me watch he made me watch this much there there was the show obviously but then they did some movies Honestly, right around the time color TV started happening, I think there was one called Monsters Go Home that I used to watch as a kid. And it's it was fun, you know, all, all the characters and the stuff. So I'm excited. And then, you know, you know, of course, the Sherry Moon hate's always going to be there, which I really I could give or take. I don't want to have a dog in that fight, quite frankly. But yeah, me neither. You know, I don't you know, it's, she's it's, given good performances. She's given bad performances. So, I, yeah, it's like I it's know. like but it's like, what do you guys expect? There are honestly, I kind of commend that. Like, dude, they're a fucking husband and wife team. Like, honestly, whether you I agree or not, everything she does is uh, Oscar worthy. But uh, I mean, she'll never have the ability to, you know, step on stage, slap somebody, then accept an award. She'll never <laughs> be that talented. But yeah. I mean, she, I mean, for fuck's sake. I mean, they're a husband. She could slap wife. me. I mean, she could slap me. I'd be fine. But you know. I, I, let me tell well, to that point, Christian, you don't hear people bitch about Sam Raimi using Ted Raimi and everything he does just because they're brothers, you know? Like, well, I'm gonna put my brother well, in let, everything I do. Let me be devil's advocate. Yeah, well, but Ted Raimi never he's not the star, he's just helping out and he does fun little stuff, so it's different. Like that's True. that's the argument. Yeah, I, I get that, but even as a bit player, you know, there are a lot of directors that will use their significant others or their family members in pretty much everything they do. Uh that's not out of the yeah, that's not out of the ordinary. It is Rob does give her bigger parts. I will agree to that. In some of the movies, uh, some of them she delivers. I thought her in the remake of Halloween, I thought she was great as Michael's mom. Um, I thought she let did me, pretty, pretty let, well. Let, let, the let me go through this and tell me if you agree. Just a thumbs up or a thumbs down, no in between. Halloween and Halloween 2, even though it's small. I, I know, even though it's small parts. Halloween, Halloween 2, thumbs up. 31, thumbs down, but there's no foundation for that. It's a junk food porno movie, but still, thumbs down. Uh, Lord of Salem, thumbs up. And honestly, the only thing I would really thumbs down her on is 31. I think I'm going to agree. 
Yeah. You know? Uh, but I mean, the, what, what what are we? It's like relative to these movies, they're fucking horror films. Like, yeah, this I mean, isn't this isn't Stanley Kubrick movies. And there's no character development in 31. That's not the point. So like, if you're trying to like relate to this character and get to know them, you're not going to. So it's not really her fault. Rob Zombie wrote a movie that was just supposed to be a sadistic like gore fest for 90 minutes, and he was like, "Hey Sherry, you want to be a part of it?" Like it wasn't. Yeah. It's not like I'm, I'm looking for some crazy arc. Um. I will say the three from hell is her weakest of the firefly films, I think performance wise, but I still don't think it's bad. Yeah. I but forgot about three from hell. I, I, yeah. I, I, I guess I would thumbs up her in that because she got to do some cool shit. Yeah. But, when she uh, was acting bad shit, like with in the, in, in jail the prison was stuff, great. Yeah. It was pretty good prison acting crazy great. like that. But when they, then when she got out, it was just like, ah, I've seen this before. But I mean, overall, yeah, the, the, it, we could go on and on about that. I, I do want to say to your point about a PG Rob Zombie movie. I've been saying this to people for months. I am so excited. Mainstream audiences will get a chance to digest Rob Zombie. Families will get a chance to you're going to see a toned down Rob Zombie movie and people are going to recognize him as a good filmmaker. Cause he is a good filmmaker and they're going to be like, wow, this is dripping with atmosphere. This is really well put together. The production design is great. Like I'm excited for Rob to kind of break out a little bit in the mainstream with this. Dude, you know that that movie is going to look so cool. All his movies look cool. Dude, you've watched, God knows you've watched it. Those fucking making ofs on the Halloween documentaries. The guy is a pain in the ass. I mean, this, the fucking costume designer can't even like get something done quickly because he's got to so Rob's. Gonna, let's 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 adjust the zipper. Just, hold on. Hold, just stop. Everybody mm -hmm. stop. Let's adjust the zipper a little bit. Hmm. I don't really like do. This. Remember, he's like, I don't like this. We're redoing all of it. Like, yes. He'll, dude, he'll I, I don't want to work on his movies. I wouldn't no. want to work on them. He'll do. Re, he'll redo an entire take because of one minuscule thing. He will rebuild a set. And if he, he did. doesn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. Rob is very, very anal about that stuff. And quite frankly, that tells me he cares. You know what I mean? Say what you want about Rob Zombie. There are filmmakers that will just coast through filmmaking because, ah, well, it's a job. Uh, Rob is not that guy. Rob, he's not. He's not. Yeah. It's just not. I just, you know, I don't want people to just like his films because I'm asking you to. It's not that. Just like, for fuck's sake, dude. Like, I, I've, I, I don't understand why people hate this guy so vehemently. I think it's because he's being himself and doing his thing, and that just pissed. You know what I learned something, Nick? My dad told me something. And I'm not necessarily talking about the people that listening that aren't fans of his movie. If you're just not a fan, I get that. I'm talking about these people that want him dead. Yeah. My dad told me, he said, son, the most critical people in the world are the ones who do the least in life. And that's so true. I mean, dude, when you start doing something and creating and, and what, what, even YouTube stuff, when you're creating stuff and working on things, you just start to appreciate shit because you see even YouTube videos. It takes time. It takes work. It takes effort. And so when you just don't do anything, you have no sense of what things take to do. And so you, I just think like those people can be so overtly critical for no reason. And I don't understand why it has to get the level of being so personal. Like Rob, as a guy, he's a good dude. Like he's a charitable guy. He's, I've, I mean, he's seems to be well liked by a lot of people in the music and film industry. Um, you know, by all accounts, him and his wife have a very good, healthy relationship. Like he's a stand up dude. Uh, I, I don't understand why it has to be so personal. I, you don't hear these allegations about Rob Zombie. You don't they, no. He's just he's not a bad dude. And Do you so, remember? This is what blew me away. Do you remember when there was something on the news like eight or ten years ago when a skate park opened up near his house and he was the one that was complaining like you guys are making too much noise? Yeah. Are you I'm telling me, you, Rob? He's a, he is a modern day John Carpenter. He's just a cranky old man, but he means well. Like he means well. He's not a bad dude. He's just a cranky old get off my lawn kind of guy. That's and right. I. I can respect that. I just, I, I really, really hope this opens do more doors for Rob Zombie. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this, and I don't think it's far fetched at all. This is going to be Rob Zombie's easily his most successful movie. His most successful right now is Halloween with 79 million worldwide. This is going to do better than that. This is going to be 100 million plus. This is going to be, gonna be this year, you think, or next year? 
Okay, so I'm going to name drop someone. He doesn't listen to the podcast, um, but Brad Miska, uh, one of the co-founders of Bloody Disgusting, I've talked to him on, um, on messages about it. He swears up and down that this movie's already filmed. And he says Rob Zombie's dropping these behind-the-scenes photos and whatnot while he's on tours, while he's across the country playing a show. You told and, me about that, yeah. Yeah, he swears up and down it's already filmed. I didn't really know if I bought it, but then I was like, true, he was he played a show last night in L.A., like this was months ago, and he was apparently in Bulgaria the next morning? Like, how does that work? And then... um. It gets a PG rating. Movies don't get rated unless there's an assembly cut for the MPAA to see. So I was like, damn, this might actually be done. But even if it's not done, it's at least filming, as we know. So I would I would say fall. I would say the hope is going to be fall. And wouldn't it be the biggest dick move for Rob to drop it in October to go up against Halloween? I fucking say, hope <laughs> he does. I hope he does. Say, fuck you, Malik Akkad. I, I, dude, I'm seriously, wait up. Is this universal? Yep. They, oh yeah. No, so they, they wouldn't do it then. Yeah. You know what? Well, though? it comes out. Halloween comes out mid October. You could release this end of September, first week of October. Give it a few weeks apart. Yeah. I, I feel like you have to release this in the fall. It's a horror movie. I mean, it's a, the monsters. Oh, yeah. It, it's just going to be Halloween atmosphere. Like you got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to release this end of September through the end of October. I don't think there's a better window than that. Yeah, I, that makes sense to me, quite frankly, because I have seen him being on tour and doing shows and stuff. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get some information on that soon. Not but, just uh, that, but our buddy Sean Clark, when I asked him about it over a year ago, uh, before it was officially announced, he stopped me and said, I can't talk about it. Can't say a word. Can't confirm yeah, anything about it. Yeah, I'm just saying. So, and that, Sean and I have talked about it since then. And obviously, he told me, you know, retroactively, yeah, I knew, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it at the time. Obviously, you can talk about it now. Um, so it makes me wonder. I mean, most movies, they're not in pre-production for two years. I mean, maybe it is done. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and I think we were texting yesterday. I told you I was I. I, I watch Sean's channel a lot. I mean, he's got a great channel. I love his low quality phone shit where he's just showing his collection and eating fruity pebbles and stuff oh, yes. a lot. But uh, I did notice he did a podcast episode where the special effects guy, Chris, was actually with him. And I was like, oh, well, that's cool. Let me check that out. And I was watching that. I didn't finish it, but I was watching it. And I really like Chris. He seems like a cool, nice guy, which is, you know totally different from sean <laughs> yeah yeah sean if you're listening yeah uh, he's not listening sean, well sean will be the first to tell you too he's like people think i'm a dick like they'd look at my facial expressions or how I he's talk. got i if he does listen to this i am of he, he was on the show so it's like of course i like sean sean does have a get the fuck away from me look on his face a lot yes Yes, he does. And even though I, I, even though Sean may say, of course, I'm not a mean guy. He's not lying. But does Sean probably get a bunch of motherfuckers all the time trying to talk to him? There's no way he couldn't have a get the fuck away from me look on his face. I mean, honestly, dude, you got to like. Uh, he even talked about it at conventions. He can't go like five feet without somebody. Dude, 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 dude. Like I can imagine. And he's there to work. So I totally get it. So, yeah. I think he likes Sean, being home whenever he can. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's not a it's an enviable life and it isn't at the same time because I couldn't imagine. I mean, but I'll tell you what, guys, there is not a person in this industry that has been more gracious with their time and and support than Sean. I mean, Amen. When I interviewed him on my channel, he gave me over three hours. We just we just bullshitted for three hours. Um, you know, he he he's reached out to me. He's called my cell phone. I mean, who am I? Um, he's he'll, he'll he subscribe to my channel. He'll comment on posts of mine on Instagram. Sometimes he's just a good dude. Like he's just a good dude that he's very busy. But if he likes you, you'll know he likes you. He'll make time to be like, hey, you're OK with me, man. And so I, I, I respect the hell out of Sean. I really do. Like, him and I lot. would love to I would love to have him back on again and talk to him about 
all kinds of shit. I like to talk yep. to him about his his favorite music and all that kind of stuff. And we'll do that yeah. soon. But I, we, I was obviously, it's not like it's a secret because all we fucking do is tell the audience what we're trying to plan. I want Chris because yeah. when I I saw his, I was watching Return of Living Dead three and I saw his name. I was like he worked on return of living dead three. And so like, I want to talk to him about his experience on that, mo that movie and the other stuff he's done. So yeah, dude, he did the, he worked on the fucking dark night, the dark so night. Cool. Like, dude, I didn't, shit, I, you know, I, I, I watched, I told you I was watching and it sucks. Cause I still never went to go see the Batman, which I'm just so bummed out about. I think it's still playing at the theater, but we were prepping and my wife was like, let's watch all of them. And I started with, Michael Keaton's again, Batman, Batman Returns, which I like Batman 89 the most. I like it more than Returns, which people may be surprised because Returns is like nastier and sludgier with the Penguin. Love Batman 89, like Batman Returns. I like Batman Forever because it's just so ridiculous. Batman Robin, I like Arnold in it. Don't like Robin whatsoever. Don't, just get him out of these movies. I don't, I don't <laughs> want Robin. Like I have no interest in Robin. Who wants Robin? No. You know, I don't know. Uh, I do. I did not love Batman Begins because it's so fucking slow. And my wife is like, you you have to have Batman Begins to have the Dark Knight. You have to have it. And I was like, OK. And I watched the Dark Knight and I get it. Heath Ledger's like everybody's like, dude, he's the best. He's the best. My only problem with these movies Genuine. My only complaint with these movies is the fight scenes are edited so piss poorly fast. I can't f understand what's going on. I, I don't need everything to be blood sport where all those guys are legitimate martial artists where they choreograph their fights and it's one camera 30 seconds before a cut. I don't need that. But dude, those fights, it was really bad in Batman Begins. The, yeah. In the beginning, those fight scenes were edited so bad. I was like, Sydney, I have no idea what they're doing. I can't understand this fight scene slightly. And all of a sudden, somebody's on the ground. And then you see that Liam Neeson had Batman on the ground. And I'm like, oh, so apparently he whipped his ass. But I can't tell because this stuff is edited so quick. I mean, dude, I can't. I, I just can't do it. No, I, I, I skip Batman Begins. I really do. I mean, it's not a bad movie, but yeah, it is. It's boring for a good portions of it. It's, it is your, your, it's your cardinal sin with superhero movies with a superhero that I'm already well aware of. I do not need a two hour origin story. Please, for the love of God, spare me that shit. And that's a great thing about the Batman, the new one that came out. He's Batman from the first 10 minutes of the movie. Good. You like, you, there's no bullshit backstory origin story oh my god he was in a cave and there was a bunch of bats no none of that shit so yeah i no i feel you it'll be on hbo max in about a week and a half <clears throat> yeah so the other thing i wanted to mention i remember chris on, on, on the on the sean clark spot I forget the name of it what's the name of his podcast a thing with two heads thing with two heads i remember they had a cool logo so he chris nelson had talked about finishing filming the Halloween movies and stuff. And I think they were talking about Sean asked him. And I, I remember reading something today, like Blum Blumhouse says they'll make another one. Sean was like, so when do you think they're going to reboot this again? And Chris said that he goes, dude, from my impression, it's going to be at least 10 years. And Sean is like, ha, which I agree with Sean, but Chris seemed pretty adamant. Like we're done. Like, I mean, yep. What do you think time frame wise we're looking at? Honestly, it depends. If Blumhouse has the rights still, if they re up again with Trankus, it probably would be longer because everything I've heard from Jamie Lee, from Chris on Sean's episode, on their episode of the podcast, sounds to me like this is going to be pretty final. Um, and obviously, it's not final forever. We know that, but. There's some finality to this movie for sure. So I don't I don't know, but I would say it'll be in another form of media somehow. Now, what is that? Is that TV? Um, is that just I, I don't know. But um yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's interesting, but it sounds to me like they're very 
adamant about, hey, we're closing the book on this chapter. Like it's it's going to be done. You're going to walk away from Halloween ends and go, okay, that put a bow on it. So I don't know, man. I don't want TV, dude. Well, how, neither how do you, neither do I. Neither how do you do, do Halloween on TV? Ugh. I don't. I don't think you can unless you have it span, you know, the entire month of October or some shit. I don't. I, but I don't know because the, the dude only shows up on Halloween night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but mean? yeah, I know. I don't want it either. But the way shit's going nowadays, you could. I could totally see it. And oh, it would just yeah. piss me off. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be 2028 is when we'll get another one. I mean, I've already said what I want. You know, if Blumhouse wants to keep milking this cow, there's a very simple way to do that. You can put finality to Lori Strode. And then a few years later, make a phone call to Danielle Harris and say, hey, we want to re- revisit your timeline now. And people will come out to see that, too. So I mean shit at this point, what's what's the harm in what's the harm in, in parallel universes anyway? I mean at, at this point we've got five fucking timelines in this franchise. There's no harm in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean at this point they need to stop with the whole like overthinking it. Oh well we can't we can't bring this character in or or even if they're a different character, we can't bring this actor in. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, you can. Lori Stroke died like multiple times. Like whatever. Shut up. I don't know if this is true or not. It was on IMDb, which still I don't know if I would take that as the Bible. But on IMDb, under Ghostbusters Afterlife, it said that Paul Rudd was offered Tommy Doyle and turned it down to do Ghostbusters Afterlife instead. That's not exactly what happened. Um, what happened was, and someone from Blumhouse talked about this about a year ago, they asked him to do it and he was already filming Ghostbusters. And he said, I can't, I'm currently shooting another movie. I won't be free. So, but he gave them quote unquote, his blessing to, uh, cast somebody else. And apparently I believe Anthony Michael Hall said this, Paul Rudd called Anthony Michael Hall to congratulate him and give him his blessing to play Tommy Doyle. Give him his blessing. Yes, I'm serious. <laughs> and it's Joe funny Chappelle's to me. legendary Curse of Michael but, Myers. But see, that's the thing that kills me is that I think deep down Paul Rudd actually kind of is proud of that role. But he's so into these bigger Hollywood movies now. He's the funny guy. He's now in Marvel movies. He's not going to come out and be like, guys, remember when I was in Halloween 6? Like, no one wants to talk about that. But I think deep down, I mean, it was his first movie. I was going to say, it's his, it's his yeah. first movie. So, I mean, yeah. whether you love it or not, even Dana Ashbrook, who I think his first movie was Return of the Living Dead 2. He even talks about, like, I'll always have a fondness for it. It's my first movie. You never forget that. So, I mean, of course. You know, hundred bucks says Paul Rudd owns a copy of Curse of Michael Myers. Hundred bucks says he owns a copy, and but I just thought it was so cool for him to call Anthony Michael Hall and be like, "Hey, man, good luck. Like, have fun with the character." Like Paul fucking Rudd, dude. That's awesome. I love Paul Rudd. So I would have loved to have seen him back. That would have blown my mind. I would have been like, "You bastards really did it." And you honestly, Paul- yeah. And honestly, I wouldn't have been able to review that film without goggles on because I would have been too happy that Paul Rudd was back and I would have been way less harsh. I'll also go a step further. I think he would have actually done it if it wasn't for him filming Ghostbusters because of how successful 2018 was. I think he would have done it. That was a $250 million movie. It was a big time movie. I think he would have been like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, mean, he, he did okay with Ghostbusters. I'm sure. But uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sure they wrote him a nice check. Um, so but I mean, if it, nowadays Blumhouse, whether some people like it or not, right now it's Blumhouse and A24, you know, and and those companies can really attract some talent that you wouldn't expect to be in horror movies. I mean, they really can. So, yeah, so uh, I guess before we start QA, and is there anything else you want to bring up or anything on your mind? What have you been watching um, lately? Anything like that? Just whatever. No. What have I Anything, watched really. lately? Um, so I watched Antlers. Um, I caught that the other night. That was cool. 
I thought that's it was cool. okay. I didn't yeah, buy it, it, and I'm glad I didn't. I was like, I'm, that's one th- I can watch that for now, and if I see the Blu-ray for cheap down the road, sure. But twenty two dollars for that Blu-ray at the yeah, time was like, no, oh, no, no. I caught it on HBO Max. Um, Me too. It, you know, it was cool. It, it was cool. It was okay. Um, I caught Don't Breathe Two last night. <laughs> um, weird experience with that movie. It was super fun. Um. But my God, I kept turning to my wife. I said it like four times. I was like, are we team blind man? Like, are we I team did. blind man now? And she's like, no, we're not team. I was like, okay, I'm confused. Like, I, what are they trying to do to me here? And uh, the way it ends, it, 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 is, it puts a nice bow on it. Like, okay, we're team no one. Like, I'm cool with that. We're team no one. But we're team little girl. Um, yeah. But yeah, like multiple points through that movie, you're like, kill them all blind man, but also die? Like it, it's a weird experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know how to feel about that one either. I've certainly liked the first one better. Yeah, but it was fun. It was, it was fun. And there were some really cool kills. Like there was definitely some cool uh, VFX and, and, and practical effects too. I, I really, I had a fun time with it, but it's not one I'm going to buy. I thought the first one was damn good. I thought that one was a good time, but I wouldn't buy it. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, I'm trying to think. I uh, rewatched The Lighthouse a few nights ago. Still as fucking batshit as ever. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I really haven't. I've been watching some TV, but uh, I guess I'll just get them out now because I get three a show. Uh, Doctor Sleep, Doctor Sleep, Doctor Sleep. And that's that's all I got. You re- did you really rewatch that again or? No, I'm, that, I'm not. I'm not. In a, I'm not. No. In a, I'm not in a uh, troll mode tonight. So you can talk about it. No, I, I don't. I, I haven't watched it in months. It's 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 three hours long, man. I mean, it's it is a it is a commitment to watch <laughs> that movie. So no, uh, but I have been. Uh, I was telling you, I've been listening to that. Oh, yeah. And I caught Morbius. I caught Morbius. I had fun with Morbius, man. There's so much shit going on on the Internet about it. It's just like. God damn, dude. I like the Venom movies. It felt a lot like the Venom movies. <laughs> I thought it was fun. It's a little darker, you know, a little zanier, a little over the top. It was fun. Well, was I, fun. I can only I can only speculate, but from from what I remember some some people saying that are into that world where they were they were upset that apparently it's supposed to be a Spider Man film or something. And they're like, nobody cares enough about a, a, this character without a Spider-Man or something is what I remember the general, I say general consensus. That's what I saw, but I don't know a rat. My, my, I don't know a rat's ass thing about Morbius. Just didn't, neither did I, but these bastards want Spider-Man in the movie and there's plenty of connections. You know, there's plenty of Easter eggs. They're telling you, Hey, this is setting up. Eventually he's going to fight Spider-Man in some way or another, but people are like, I don't care. I want Spider-Man right now. And I'm like, man, calm down. What, what happened to getting some solo villain movies? Those are fun too. I like to see an anti-hero, you know, for hour and a half, two hours, like get their own story, you know. And and Morbius too. It literally starts off. The first scene is like really all the exposition and backstory you get, which is awesome. It gets right into the shit, and I'm like, okay, like yeah, there's some cool effects in it. It's I don't. It was cool, man. I mean, it's fun. It's fucking vampires. It's a living vampire. You get two badass vampires fighting. Like, does, does he turn into like a bat or anything, or does he just turn into like no. like a like a he doesn't turn into a bat thing? Yeah, yeah, but it, it actually looks pretty nasty. Um, but there's a couple scenes that have quite some horror influence too. Like, really do like where they're actually kind of like tense. You're like, oh damn, like this is kind of creepy. Um, but uh, no, he but he can like use the bats. He can like call bats. And there's like a scene in the movie where he calls like thousands of fucking bats to like attack someone. And it's so bad. It's pretty badass. Like, I'm not going to lie. It was pretty cool. But did it make any money? uh, I'm 40 million domestic opening weekend. uh, 44. Yeah, made 84 million worldwide opening weekend. Uh, Budget was only 75. Everybody was saying like, oh, nobody's at the theater. (laughs) Like yeah, that was that was people trolling, just trying to be funny. It was the number one movie last week. Uh, it's probably crossed. It, I mean, we we don't get foreign numbers until the start of a new week, but I'd say it's over a hundred mil now. 
uh definitely will be after the weekend it's gonna make money it's it, you know it's not it's not gonna make venom money 800 million or batman money but this movie was made for 75 million so if they make 150 million or so which they will well they made their money back and then some and this is all just to set up the sinister six they're trying mm -hmm. to set up a sinister six movie so they need to introduce all these villains give us venom give us morbius give us the vulture give us craven and make sure their their movies don't lose money and then once you've introduced all of them okay now we'll put spider-man in here you can fight all of them so that's what they're trying to do so Whatever. If you guys haven't seen it and you've been hearing all the horror stories online, I promise you it's not as bad as you've heard. I promise you. And if you like the Venom movies, you will at least have fun with this movie. I, I enjoyed it. Well, I'd like to thank. Uh, I'd like to thank a, a lot of our listeners are 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 well rounded enough to not just not see a movie because s s certain people say they don't like it. Oh, most yeah, of them, we, most of them are good. And they they know damn well to watch something for themselves and decide if they like it. So. Yeah, we we you and I are probably fans of hundreds of movies that the critics absolutely destroyed. So, you know, hey, yeah, Which, do you man? Yeah. Uh, have you bought Scream yet? Five Cream, whatever. It's it was supposed to be here today. It's not here, my steel book. But yes, I am waiting on. But I, when I checked earlier today, it said it would be here by eight p.m. And then it said that it would be here tomorrow by noon. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't pre-order the steel book. <clears throat> I'm not driving to a Best Buy tomorrow. I don't feel like it. But uh, my Walmart didn't have it out yet. Maybe tomorrow. But yeah, I mean it's it's on Paramount Plus. So I watched it again on Paramount Plus a few weeks ago. Uh, I wasn't in a huge rush to get it, uh, but I did, you know, get the steel book. Um, so yeah, I like the steel. I like it. You know, but what I was going to say was like uh, when people were posting it the other day, you know, whenever a new movie comes out, your your Instagram timeline is five green, five green, five green, five. Everybody holding the movie, you know, mm -hmm. which is fun. I like to be a part of it. It's fun. But I started looking at the top of it and I said, wait a minute. It just says 4K plus digital. No Blu-ray. And I, I'm actually a person that would prefer it that way if the cost reflected that. But the 4K is still twenty nine ninety five at walmart and shit and i'm assuming best buy and oh well it comes with a little mini poster well that's cool and all but okay what does that cost two dollars to make so i'm a little i will say though christian it's that mini poster that you like that old school looking one i understand that and that's cool and i'm still tempted to get it for that but i don't want it i don't want that to become typical to just not include the Blu-ray, but the price be the same. If you don't have the Blu-ray in there, the the price should reflect that. Twenty two ninety five for a four K, I think, is still a little high, but still, I wouldn't be that upset about it. But twenty nine ninety five for, and I don't think this is the first time Paramount's done this. I think, uh, well, I think they actually they priced Escape from L.A. pretty fair, but um, but still, man, I just I'm a little salty about that, and I kind of just want to get the Blu-ray because of that. Because I guess do I want to pay thirty dollars for the four K that I can watch in one room in the house unless I feel like fucking moving my player around? Oh, never mind. That's the only four K TV I have in the house is is in my living room. Do I want to buy that to where I can only watch it in there, or do I just get myself nah. a Blu Ray and it's gonna look? I mean, let's be honest. Get the get the those... Blu Ray, and in a few months from now, you'll be able to buy that poster separately. If you I don't really even want need the poster. I, it's like, dude, I don't have any room for another. I don't need it. I don't have any room for it. Where where where, where am I? Where am I gonna put a mini put? Where you do you see an inch of free space back there? You're back I, what am I, I, I do. I've got the Friday the Thirteenth section right here where it's all one through eight mini posters. So like, what am I supposed to do? Take one of those out? Then I would have OCD because it's Friday one two three four scream six six seven. No, yeah. I can't do that. So it's just like, yeah. honestly, the Blu-ray is probably gonna be fine. But I, if this becomes the norm where they just start charging you for the 4k but the price is the same i'm gonna be pissed off and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna buy, pay for that shit dude you've got to treat your customers right you can't do this kind of shit and keep because if this happens from paramount in the future i'm gonna be pissed off i'm, I'm not especially, gonna buy it especially when the physical media market right now definitely you know if it i don't know that's stretching it man that's really they need to be 
they need to be, you know, doing the right stuff. Now, some people are getting mad at me. Oh, Christian, if you buy the steel book, you get the Blu-ray with the 4K. Well, guess what, buddies? I didn't pre-order it because I didn't feel like it. But I, God knows I'm not going to find it in stores. So I can check my Best Buy. I can check it online. Of course, there weren't any steel books. It's Scream. I, I anticipated, I guess, enough people were going to pre-order it. But then again, I didn't know if I had known that they weren't going to include the Blu-ray and it was still going to be thirty dollars, I would have pre-ordered it. But I didn't know, so it is what it is. But I'm just going to get the yeah. Blu-ray, and I promise you, I will enjoy the movie just the same as if I had that 4K version. I guarantee you, I will enjoy it just the same. So I'll probably just grab the Blu-ray version. Yeah, man. Yeah, you do it. All right. We got some cues. Let's get into it. They got some cues. We got some A's. Something like that. Let's get let's get through the troll questions first. Oh God. Uh, uh, the most important the most important question is why won't Nick give you a turn wearing the Halloween six hat from Spirit Halloween? I got five upvotes, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, I'll say on the last few episodes, I haven't. Are even you wearing it right it. now? Yeah, you are wearing. I am, it. Yeah, I. I but that's because I did a Halloween video earlier today. <laughs> So I'm still wearing it from my Halloween four video that I did. So I haven't worn it the past couple episodes, but well, if let me Christian you, ever wanted to wear it. He'd wear it. No, this dude. I, let me see if I can show it. Let me lean this up. So up there, my Halloween right. The, right here. That's my creation X Halloween six mass. It's really nice. I just put the hat on him. So like he that hat staying there. I'm not wearing that hat. Plus, look how fucking perfect it is. Look behind my head. It is perfect. It's the poster. It is right there. So you know. All right. Uh, Whatever, guys. Leave me alone. Uh, thoughts on the Langoliers? Now that is something I like to see remade. I don't remember a fucking thing from this movie. I don't even me know neither. if I've seen Langoliers. I'm sorry, Ethan. Great question though, but you should know better that I haven't seen the Langoliers. <laughs> Ethan, I will. I'll just say this. Let him go ahead and remake it to, to remind me something about <laughs> it. I you. <laughs> then they can put it out in a double pack. Yeah, I don't know shit. Okay, so listen. I don't know if this is a troll question or not. So this is what I said. The next you need episode is an all out Q and A. Ask away, even if it's a question that will ir irritate Nick. Obviously, if they're a fan of the show, they know I'm fucking around. But this question comes from Mike Hernandez. <laughs> My question is, why is Nick so irritable? Also, thanks for recommending ten. 10 until midnight. That movie was fantastic. 10 to midnight, Mike. But yes, it's a great movie. Uh, my, Mike, I, I have to say, I, I got to <laughs> feel like you're trolling because he's got to be. <laughs> Christian gives me a hard time all the time. And I feel like I really don't bite into, you know, I don't feed into a lot of that. He tries to mess with me, you know, it's like, whatever. I, I think it's a joke. It's got to be okay. a joke. I don't, I don't, I was going to say, I'm not very soft skinned or since, yeah, like I, People say shit. I'm a Halloween fan. Dear God, I get enough. You've taken shit. a beating. Like, You've taken a beating. Yeah. Uh, what's some of your favorite non non N O N franchise slashers? Mine are Intruder, Blood Rage, and Maniac. So non franchise slashers, Fran slasher movies that obviously are one and done. I guess is what uh, he's asking. Maniac 2012, for sure. Up there. Um, I love Black Christmas 2006. I don't even give a shit. Um, I'm just like looking at my shelf right now because a lot of these slashers normally do get turned into franchises. Mm. Um, you go ahead. Yeah. Name some intruder is definitely one. Uh, I also love the burning. I love, yeah, the burning uh, curtains is great. I love, uh, New York Ripper. I love uh, the original Maniac. I love Ma uh, Madman. Um, uh, what mm. else is there? Edge of an Axe is great from uh, that Mexican director. I forgot his name. He also did a movie called uh, Deadly Manor. That's great. The Initiation's pretty good. Uh, the Slayer. I love the Slayer. I got a poster of that. Um. Night, uh, night, sh Hell Night, not Night Shift. Hell Night's pretty good. That's got Linda Blair in it. It's kind of yeah. a monster movie, but it's 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 a slasher too. That's yeah, fun. Um, you know, Candyman because I, I don't count any of the sequels. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, that's 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 kind of a loaded question. It's a good question. Well, I've it done show. I I've done videos on this, and I've done like three or four volumes. So I know that I've I've mentioned a bunch. Probably, and of course, there's stuff post scream. Um, Valentine's cool. Uh, My bloody Valentine. What am I saying? That's probably one of the biggest eighty slashers ever. My bloody Valentine's great. Uh, I like Urban Legend a lot. Urban Legend and Valentine are two really cool movies. Uh, uh, if I think of anything later, I'll shout it out. Uh, what are your guys' opinions on films not necessarily horror, but embraced by the horror community, such as A Clockwork Orange? I love A Clockwork Orange. I really do. And it's it's a movie that is... If you want an emotionally draining experience, watch A Clockwork Orange. That is a movie that is on the level of the original Hills Have Eyes, the original Last House on the Left. Movies like that that yeah. just make you... I Spit on Your Grave. Uh, I Spit on Your Grave is pretty hard for me to watch, honestly. Uh, it's just very, very, uh, it, it, I mean, you guys know the subject matter. It, some of that kind of stuff can get a little too far for me and be hard to watch. But, um, I, I think that's a great movie. I think I really do. I think that movie is uh thought provoking. It's unsettling. I, I think it's good. Yeah. Uh, for me, when I think of non horror films that the horror community embraces, obviously I think RoboCop is a big one. RoboCop, those movies Terminator. are really bloody. Uh, well, you know, a lot of people call Terminator a slasher yeah, film. You I know. know. Uh, technically, you could say Predator, because uh, I mean, Alien is a horror movie, but the original Predator—that's an action movie. I mean, it has horror elements for sure, but I, I think that stuff's cool. I think we gravitate toward that stuff because it has a lot of things that remind us of horror movies. I think that's really the yeah, thing. Yeah, and there's a lot. I'm 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 having trouble thinking of stuff off the top of my head, but like there are movies that aren't horror films, but they are shot and made just like horror. Like the guest is an example. That's kind of like, like this thriller a, movie. It's so good, but the horror community ate it up and swallowed it, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's shot like a horror film. It feels like a horror film, but is it a horror film? No, no, not really. But like it is because it feels like one. So it's one of those things. I think the guest is one of those movies that, I remember when that came up. I mean, the, the horror community just swallowed it up and they're like, this is ours. And that's yeah. a great film. The Jurassic Park movies are a lot like that too. Horror fans sure tend to love the Jurassic oh, Park. Oh, yeah. Movies. Monster. If it's yeah, it, to me, that's like monster movies too, with like yeah. dinosaurs and stuff. Um, this one's from Lori O'Quinn. She's a new patron of mine. Thank you. Are there any movie theaters in your area that show classic horror flicks on occasion here in South Florida? It's a monthly happening. No, no. No, I live in the sticks. So I think Dallas, which is three hours from me, has like what they call uh, Alamo Draft House theaters. And they 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 do cool stuff, seasonal stuff. I think uh, some of my friends said they saw Silent Night, Deadly Night, like at the theater at a Alamo Draft House. And I think one of them, I forgot who it was. Somebody told me that they went and saw Silent Night, Deadly Night at the theater. And when the movie ended at the Alamo Draft House, it was the Scream Factory Blu-ray <laughs> menu yeah. screen that popped up. And I'm thinking, I was thinking about that. I was like, I wonder if I would be pissed off about that or not. I guess not. <laughs> you know, but no, it'll be like, yeah. damn, this isn't a, this isn't a print. This isn't a print of the movie. I have a theater you here know? that shows older movies, um, but it's like never horror. So no. Uh, Death Metal Lita says, what are your thoughts on Dead Silence 2007? Love it. Eat that shit up. It's it's interesting that that's like, I wouldn't say forgotten, but it's never typically like, oh, dude, James Wan's best film is Dead Silence. No. You know? I was actually going to say most people consider that his weakest film. And if that's your weakest film, you're a pretty damn good filmmaker. Just going to. Just gonna say that because Dead Silence, Mary Mary Shaw scared the shit out of me when that movie came out. Yeah, you know, that yeah, damn bitch's tongue. Like, uh, yeah, no, you know, no. I don't, I don't even know if I own that on Blu-ray. I think I have a DVD stashed away. Somewhere. I don't have I, the Blu-ray. I have the DVD. I need to watch it again too. It's been years since I've seen Dead Silence, but I remember liking it. I never, I remember liking it a lot. So, yeah, yeah, it's great. I love it. Uh, permanent pictures. They were just on the show with us last week. Uh, favorite guilty pleasure band or musician. Oh man. You know, like I, you know, I don't want to be that guy. That's like 
I'm not guilty or I don't I'm not guilty about anything I listen to, but to deny that you would be a little nervous to play stuff in front of people or your peers would be to lie. So I'm trying to think of stuff like that that I would be like Mine's easy. Go ahead. Uh guys take into account I was a nineties kid. They were very popular in the nineties. Backstreet Boys. Um or Owl City. I have always loved both of them. And uh, I, I've, I have, I'm actually thinking about going to see Backstreet Boys in concert in July because they're coming to Cincinnati. And my wife told me about it. And uh, I grew up on them. One of the, I, I was actually the first CD I ever owned was uh, Millennium by uh, Backstreet Boys in 2000, I think, when I was like six or seven. Yeah. I, it's just a guilty pleasure. I don't know. I listen to it. It transports me back to when I was a kid. Like I wouldn't go, I'm not going to go buy a t-shirt and be like, yeah, Backstreet's back. Like, no, but I just can't help it. Uh, I'll jam some of their older tunes sometimes. I get them and NSYNC confused all the time. I don't know the difference. Don't you dare. Backstreet Boys came first and they were way better. I don't know who sang what. Bye 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 is NSYNC. That damn song. One of their only like big hits, whereas Backstreet Boys had hit after hit after hit. I mean, you you know Backstreet Boys. If I if you listen to five seconds of some of their songs, you'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that song. I remember they did. I want it that way, right? That's Backstreet yep. Boys. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they're the better of the two. Dude, I'm thinking like, I actually came out with an album two years ago for the first time in like almost a decade, and it charted at number one on the Billboard 200, and uh, their first time in over a decade charting that high, and it was actually a really good album. I really liked it. I'm really drawing a blank here. Like I'm trying to think of what I'm embarrassed to listen because I have me. I I have no problem listening to any kind of music in front of my wife. I really don't. But I'm trying to think of who I would be like. I, I just don't know. Barbara Streisand. I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just know her as an actor. I've never really listened to her music. Yeah, I actually. guess she's a musician too. Yeah. You know? Dude, I'm drawing a blank. I really am. I just really, really am. Maybe some... No, never mind. Like, I know I wouldn't. I, I really can't... Just say really, Bieber. You know, just get it over with. Say Bieber. Sure, I'll say Bieber. <laughs> you know what? There's that TikTok song. I do the same when you tell me what oh, you yeah. never want to tell you to play. I kind of like okay. it, though. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I, I actually like his new shit. Uh, I do. I have his, uh, his two most recent albums downloaded on my phone. So, you know, whatever. My music taste is weird, dude. If you went through my library, you'd be like, Justin Bieber, um, The Amity Affliction, Beartooth, Metallica. I did City. listen to Beartooth, by the way. What'd you think? Uh, it's fucking heavy. <laughs> they were yeah, good, though. They were yeah. good. It was good shit. They put on a kick ass concert, too. I've seen them a few times. I couldn't tell you what songs I listen to. I usually, whenever I pull up a band, if it's like a new band to listen to, you know, Spotify, I don't know if you use Spotify, but Spotify will basically show you like their top played five yeah. songs. And I just did those. And I was like, oh, it's good shit. Um, I'll just say, I, just because I lit legitimately can't think of a guilty band, like I, that would embarrass us. I'm just going to say Bieber because I like Let's the go. TikTok song. Believers. What's the goriest movie y'all have seen? That's a good question. Um, uh, oh man, I don't know. In terms of blood and guts, I think if I go by effectiveness, it's probably a Serbian film. Have you ever seen that, Nick? I haven't. It, it, because, because I was gonna say it's it's a Serbian film is never a movie that you could say. You know, I've seen it, but it's been a long time. Because once you see it. When I say you'll never forget it, I legitimately say you'll never forget it. And I say it's the goriest film of all I've ever seen in terms of... Look, I'm not going to spoil the movie, but legitimately, this doctor fucks a baby in the movie. So, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, but it's so over the top, I always tell people you got to see it. You have to, because it's one of the most insane... It's actually a beautifully shot movie. I had this 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 notion of what this movie was going to be, like this like... This, like you know, super eight movie. No, it's like a legitimate, real well-made film, but it's subject matter is so crazy. Um, but in terms of like legitimate blood and guts, I mean, dead alive was pretty bloody. Um, 
Green Inferno comes to mind for me. Green Inferno is one of them, sure. Uh, fucking hell, the, the remake of Evil Dead's pretty damn gory. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. Shit, Halloween Kills. I mean, that movie's pretty damn gory. Um, uh, yeah, I, I probably uh, me, Dead Alive. Probably I'm gonna say Dead Alive. Yeah, I'm gonna say Green Inferno. I like that movie a lot. So do I. I like I like I like it's it's a ri- I, I mean he's obviously remaking Cannibal Holocaust which the original Cannibal Holocaust is one of the greatest movies ever and it's way nastier cuz it looks way more real but I still like Grand Inferno a lot you know Yeah I just remember when they're ripping that dude apart on that stone slab and how just absolutely visceral Vicious, that shit yeah. is Oh god yeah it's good, Yeah it's a good one why is Halloween Res? This is the last one on my page. Why is Halloween Resurrection the Halloween film most modern horror films try to copy? I'll leave that one to you. What? I mean, it's obviously a troll question, but <laughs> I want to um, ask anyway. Why is Halloween uh, Resurrection the Halloween film most modern horror films try to copy? Well, I would because say it's the what, landmark. I would say get off of Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> <I would say. laughs> if you're copying Halloween Resurrection, you're dead on arrival. Um, oh shit dude i did not know the level of hate i was gonna get for my revisiting of resurrection i i posted that video that shit had over 400 views in less than 24 hours which for me that's that's pretty damn good and i'm like wow like people are watching this not only are they watching it they're commenting on it and people are like i can't understand how people hate on this movie so much i'm like Look, and I said it in the video like five times. If you guys have fun with this movie, if it's your thing, more power to you. But my God, is this movie shitty? Like, just from an objective standpoint, it's just shitty. And like, I never knew the kind of backlash I was going to get for that. I feel like you make a video trashing Resurrection, 99% of people are going to be like, hell yeah. You want to know what it is, Nick? What I think it is, it's not cool to hate on Resurrection anymore. I know. It's you just hate not on Halloween it, Kills or Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I mean, it's 20 years later since that movie's come out. It's like, you know, and believe me, I don't go out of my way to hate on it. But people I had been saying people had been telling me for months that I needed to finish reviewing the Halloween movies because I never finished reviewing them on my channel. You know, I got sick. I had bronchitis. Um, <laughs> How is that going, by the way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, so I just decided, screw it. I'll just do a revisited of every movie. I will re-review every movie. So I had to cover Resurrection, and I'm like, oh God, here we I go. Remember, yeah, I remember watching your watching your review. Uh, I don't remember if you talked about when you did the commentary or not, though. I can't remember. But I mean, I did. Had, I mentioned. You, I said in the video, Christian and I said the most recent time I watched this was Christian and I did it for the podcast, and I was like, we had fun watching it, but we both at the end of that movie, we're able to say, although we could laugh along with that movie, that movie sucks. Like it just, it does. And it's certainly a movie. I, I wouldn't want to, I just wouldn't go out of my way to watch by myself. Cause I, I, it's hard to laugh at silly shit by myself. Like, but with, with somebody though, it's like, yeah, it's, it's great subject matter to joke around with. I think that's, I think we even talked like, that's the way to watch in my opinion, oh, that's yeah. the way to watch Resurrection. Uh huh. Episode idea. Episode idea. Casual commentary of Freddy's Dead. Oh, I'd have a blast with that. So would I. I think that'd be fun. I'd, yeah. You know, what's funny is I don't. I don't. I don't think you've ever seen Twin Peaks, the show. Not a lot of people have, quite frankly. But like they, they talked about how they were heavily inspired by Twin Peaks when they when they made that movie. If you ever watch Twin Peaks, I I've seen the show and I literally there's no twin peaks in that movie whatsoever so i don't get it whatsoever shout out to jamie i know jamie loves twin peaks her favorite yeah. show all right now this is your questions oh, we got some good ones on there believe me uh, oh yeah do you got way better questions i'm kidding if listeners everybody <laughs> I, my my listeners gave gave fun questions because they, they it's my page they're like well let's ask silly fun questions because that's how christian is okay you all these look like fucking paragraphs on yeah yours. i'm not silly or fun guys you're not if and when they reboot halloween will it fail without jamie lee curtis do you want to answer these questions before we finish this because there's a couple questions in here do you want to finish the whole thing or do you want to answer that first um i'll just answer really quick it's not going to make the money it makes with Jamie Lee, but fail? No. The constant here is Michael Myers. 100% agree. For a lack of a better term, 
Also, I'd like to see a little ranking of the remake icons. Jackie's Freddy, Derek's Jason, Tyler's Michael, and the guy who played Leatherface in 2003, Andrew Berniarski. Thank you. I look forward to the podcast. All right, Christian. Just, can I go first? You on go this? first. You go first. This is no bullshit. Least to f- best, or least to favorite, because I'm I I don't what the fuck is best. Least favorite to favorite. Bernie Arsky, Leatherface, Derek Mears, Jackie's Freddy, and then number one is Tyler's Michael. Least to favorite. Derek Mears, Jackie's Freddy, Bernie Arsky, Tyler's Michael. Mm. Look at that. I've got Freddy higher than you, and I don't even like that movie. Yeah, I actually, and I, I will say that I think all four of them are great portrayals too. I don't think any of them are bad. I, when you watch those movies, if you don't like those movies, you don't go, "Man, Tyler Maine sucked as Michael Myers." No, he's a pretty freaking freaky Michael Myers, you know. So yeah, that was pretty easy for me. Yeah, Claudio Pedras asks, "Have you ever been starstruck by an actor actress in person?" That happened to me a couple years ago when Brad and Fiona Duro showed up at my work while on vacation in Lisbon, Portugal. Got to meet them and take a selfie, both super nice, and that was a day to remember. You go first, Christian. Let me think about this. It's only ever been one time. And Star Trek isn't the word. It was just, I guess, I, I didn't act silly or anything. It, I just had to ground, get myself grounded very fast. Uh, the, my very first convention I ever went to, the first person I ever met was Brad Dorif. Not Brad Dorif, I'm I'm because I'm reading this. Doug Bradley. And uh, I just remember when I went up to his table to meet him, he stood up and he looked at me and I was just like, holy fuck. Because he's got that formal British serious look on his face. And like he, he caught, like it was just, when I talked to him, I was like, it just it it took me a second to just like ground myself, and literally after that, I didn't give a fuck who I met. I had no problem walking right up to any of the horror people ever. Uh, the only one that I was just like, "Holy shit, this was cool!" is when I saw D. Snyder at one of the cons and just saw him going to the bathroom, and I was like, "What's up, D. Man?" And like, I just was like, "Please say something nice back to me." And he did because I'm a big Twisted Sister fan. And other than that, though, no. I mean, I don't really give a rat's ass who I meet. I mean, I swear to God, even only, even only maybe Alice Cooper, I would be like, Alice, I, I don't want to be that guy. But can I just tell you how your music has literally transformed my life and how much it means to me? And you are the soundtrack to my you are the soundtrack to my world. Like I would want to have that moment to tell him that. But honestly, I don't think I would get that worked up about meeting anybody yeah. anymore. I haven't really seen any actors or actresses like ever. Uh, when I was in LA, I did see Anna Paquin at LAX. Um, Who was that? Uh, the um, she was in True Blood. She's the uh, Little Red Riding Hood werewolf in Trick or Treat. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah. I did see her at LAX. I didn't approach her and talk to her though, but I pointed her out to my wife. I was like, dude, that's Anna Paquin. And she was like, Oh my God, that is like, that's cool. But I was, you know, she was with another girl, probably a friend or something. You know, I'm not going to be like, Oh my God. Hey, Anna Paquin. Um, but I just don't really have many stories. I haven't really seen any, to be honest with you. I've seen a lot of musicians that I like, um, you know, that I've met. Um, but, yeah, I haven't. I have really not ventured into uh, seeing any of the actors, unfortunately. I have more stories about big musicians that I had the chance to play shows with that I I, I don't like them anymore because I got you know the expression don't don't meet your heroes because they're not always going to be what you think. Yeah, I have more stories about that. I have more musicians from bands that I loved growing up that would come through my town and we got the opportunity to open for them. And I was like, you know, what? like I don't even want to listen to you guys anymore. You yeah. guys are a- assholes. Like I have more stories about that. Yeah. I have some stories about that too. That's a, that's a topic for another day for sure. My brother, my little brother did get to um, sit next to uh Jay wow from Jersey shore on a flight, uh, an entire flight. They were sitting next to each other and I was oh, wow. like, and he got a picture with her too. Cause at first I didn't believe him. He was uh, going to visit his dad. 
uh, in New York and she was on the flight sitting right next to him. And I was like, did you even say anything? He's like, not till the end of the flight. I was like, Hey, by the way, I know like who you are. And she was like, you know, you played it really cool. You didn't bother me like the whole time. Do you want a picture? And he was like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like, you know, Jay, well, I mean, Jersey shore is not really popular anymore, but that's cool. All right, let's move on. Do you guys think that a nightmare on Elm street will ever come back in any form, whether it be a movie or a Netflix series or anything? It's been a while now since the news that the Craven estate owns the series. Like, look, I, 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 I hate this expression, Craven Estate. What the fuck does that mean? His family? Yes, it's his family. Why can't we just say family? Like, it's, his every, kid. it's like everybody calls it well, Craven Estate. That's that's what's posted on Bloody Disgusting because and all when this. rich rich people die, they have an estate. They have, you know, they have You're right. That's a legal that's term. Left. I yeah. get it. So all of their IP, their money, their belongings, they all belong to the estate. And that is okay. handled through lawyers and his his children are the ones that are in charge of the items in that estate. Okay, um, see, I'm just a dumb. I'm a dumb Southern boy. I I use simple terms. I don't I, really I, understand I, it know. much either. But yeah, I mean, I I don't know why they haven't yet. But yes, one thousand percent, Freddy Krueger is not gone. Does that yeah. mean that? I don't know. Does that but, mean that's fucking Robert England coming back? No, but he's not gone. He'll be back. Yeah. And let me just say, David, thank you for your question. I'm not mad at you for using the term yeah. Craven Estate. I'm mad that I don't fucking understand what that means. <laughs> so I'm mad at myself, yeah. David. Thank yeah. you. But let me let me finish this question. He uh, let me read it again. Do you guys think that a Nightmare on Elm Street will ever come back in any form, whether it be a movie or Netflix series or anything? It's been a while now since that since the news that the Craven estate owns the series and we haven't heard anything since, and it's been a few years now, at least what is going on. Thank you. Uh, well, we've talked about this a bunch. Did, bullet to the head. Do I think it'll ever come back? Sure. I mean, of course uh, I think Freddie, Michael and Jason are, are the Wolfman, Dracula and Frankenstein will probably, they, they still make those movies. Are you kidding me? So why would they ever stop making the the eighty slashers they're they're every bit as as popular I think uh, they're over they're in the same category I think they're they're never gonna die so sure of course uh, just when is the question I I wish I could give you an answer David I still get questions all the time about the Friday the Nightmare on Elm Street box set and I I guess I should give an update on that all I am able to say because I do know stuff it's happening I can't it's not that I don't want to tell you a release date. It's that I don't know because the people that I know would know before me have said that's not been discussed or released or announced yet. But yes, it's happening. And that's not a secret. I mean, that's all over the no. internet anyway. So I'm not saying anything people don't know. Of course, people, of course, like, of course, a Nightmare on Elm Street box is happening. And it's like, we just don't know when it's coming out. So, but in terms of a new movie, I don't know. Guestimation, I would say maybe three years, maybe four years, maybe two years. I don't, honestly, I don't even know. I just don't know. But of course they're going to make another one. I just, I couldn't tell you when. Yep. He'll be back. You know. Um, For both of you, this is from Claudio Pedra again. I think this is the second, that's the second question. For both of you, what's your, and everybody feel free if we do another one of these, ask more than one question. What is your favorite made for TV Stephen King adaptation, not counting the obvious ones like It or Salem's Lot? I think, I man, you actually have the same one, which is Rose uh, Red. Rose Red. Rose Red. Love Rose Red. Yeah, dude. I remember, I remember when that came out. We, I was in second or no, no, I was like in fourth or fifth grade. I think it was fourth grade. I remember we, we watched it. It was a two night event. And when the zombie, I say zombie, when like the skeleton broad leans over the bed and he's like, I'm your dream girl. That gave me yeah. nightmares. Yeah. Legitimately. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Rose Red is one that I would love to see a modern adaptation of, too, with a bigger budget. Yeah. yeah. I love Rose Red. What would you guys do with Friday the 13th remake or a sequel? And what is your guys favorite kill in the franchise and keep up the great work? Thank you, Ethan. Thank you very uh, much, Ethan what would you guys do with Friday the 13th remake or a sequel? And what is, okay. So certainly I would, I would, I would honestly, as, as shitty as it sounds, I would probably just do with what the trend is and reboot it. Uh, in requel. the snow. That's what I've always said. Bring me to camp crystal Lake in the winter. That's, I, I'm, 
I don't know. I don't know why that doesn't excite me. I'm not against it, but I'm just like I don't. Know, I don't care about the snow. I guess I just feel like we've seen Jason hack people up at Crystal Lake in the middle of summer all the fucking time. It's like, but that's what people stuff. want, man. I, I guess but, you know. I guess, but if I had my way, yeah, requel or, or not? Well, re, just a reboot. I don't need the original story told again. Just give me a new batch of characters. Give me Jason. Give me the little bit of lore there. And if I could have it my way, have it take place in the winter. I wouldn't mind seeing. Well, no, they killed her in two. Shit. Honestly, like, no, nah, I don't know. I don't know. Just fuck it. Remake it again. I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I don't know, man. Like, what give us I Padalecki saying? back. Like, I, I wish I could tell you exactly what I want. I don't know what the hell they should do with Nightmare on Elm Street either. I just don't know. Uh, I just want to hear that in the theater again. Yeah. Okay. This is a long one. This is something, this is from Allie. This is something I've wondered for a while, but it may not be easy or possible to talk about with, without rewatching the films. I'm not sure. I've wanted to see a ranking of the Halloween franchise based on the person's least favorite to favorite fall atmosphere within each film for a while now. I feel like this particular thing hasn't been talked about much and i also feel like there are characteristics about fall that most people associate with the season everyone may grow up with a certain main characteristic that reminds them the best of fall that may cause everyone to have a different ranking of this franchise based on that uh, example they may associate halloween for being their personal favorite because of the fall atmosphere of course i understand that looking forward to the podcast have a great week so let's do this nick give favorite me favorite, yeah. give me give me top three based on fall atmosphere uh number one is halloween six bar none um number two is probably halloween four yeah i'm, I'm just right there with you i'm right and, there with you so far and number three is either oh this is hard uh number three is probably rob's first halloween or halloween 2018 I'm going with Halloween three for my third. That that would have been fourth for me. I it think that been. one, even though it's got the Irish thing, like I do that happy, happy it's, Halloween. You hear happy Santa Halloween. Mira, that, that desolate town of Santa Mira is just so creepy. Yeah. So I'm going to go with three. But other than that, we were on the, we were on the money. Yeah. All right. With the new remake era, having a more positive audience in the two thousands era, what film should be remade for modern audiences? Oh, Rose red. I said that. That'd be um, cool. Yeah. What? What's a remake we haven't gotten? That's <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying. We've gotten what? fucking everything. Uh, I'd also be cool with... I think if you redid The Fog and not make the... I was going to fucking act, say that. That was the fog. next one. Yeah. Yeah, The Fog. Give me The Fog with... um, I don't know. You know, just sticking true to the original story might be cool. Um, you know, I know that was too much to ask for in 2005, but yeah. Okay. Which actor or director would be a dream guest for the podcast? Um, actor for me, dream actor would be having, um, I would absolutely adore to have Robert, of course, England on the show. So many questions I could I would love to ask Robert and not not and not just Nightmare on Elm Street stuff. And favorite and, and, and director probably be Joe Dante or John Carpenter. If I had one of those two guys on here, I would love I would love to talk about John about a ton of stuff. Again, not just Halloween, but or Joe Dante, because he's made some of my all time favorite movies and he's worked with Spielberg. I mean, he's he's the man. So but that'd be my people. Yeah, actor, uh, I've said this for a while. Um, you know, I, I, I still want to. We want to get Scout on here. Um, I'd love to have Danielle Harris on here. Uh, she just got a boob job. Did you see that? I did not, but now I need to see it. Uh, well, she talk, she, I'm not being creepy. She talked about it on, on her podcast. Like, I'm getting my boobs done. And she, she, she Instagrammed a picture of her boobs. She, she, she has boobs now, so that's cool. <laughs> that is cool um and then as far as directors there's three if i like that i would 
be over the moon about. And that'd be like John for sure. Uh, James Wan um, and Rob Zombie, I would say. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. I think all three of those guys are super intelligent and could really like just give you some inside info into what it is to be a filmmaker that would just, I would eat that shit up. Yeah. Uh, Claudio asked this, this is obviously a question for me. Would you like to see Jean-Claude Van Damme star in a horror movie? Funny thing. He was going to be the predator, but he did not like the costume. So he did <laughs> not end up staying on that movie. Sure. I would love to see Jean-Claude being a horror film. He's tapped and got close into that genre with just really dark subject matter, but he's never done a quote unquote horror film. But I mean, of course, action and horror go hand to hand to me. So I think that'd be great. Yeah. Have you guys watched the stepfather movies? If so, what do you think? Also, what time what time of day do you guys prefer to watch horror movies? By the way, Dr. Sleep Rocks. I just watched it for the first time. <laughs> awesome jumbo me. I've seen every stepfather movie except for Stepfather 3. Which ones have you seen? Have you seen any of them? Uh, I've seen the original, and there's a remake, right? Yeah, there's a remake. There's, yeah, an, the, there's an original. I've seen the original and the remake. Those are the only two that I can think of off the top of my head. They're fine. I mean, they're, you know, it, it not atrocious. Um, I think, I think if it's, uh, I think the original Stepfather is probably one of the best films of the decade. I mean, it, that movie's amazing. I, it's, it's been a long time. Um, I remember the remake more than I remember the original, which was fine. Um, remake was a little too glossy. Yeah. I, I, it's just, it's tepid. The, the, the original opens up in this house and they did something so brilliant. So the original you're panning through a house and it's hazy in the house and it's foggy and there's blood everywhere and bodies on the couch. Like there's dead bodies all, th all throughout the living room and the camera pans up into the bathroom and then you're wondering why it's fucking hazy, but it makes everything even creepier. And then you see that it's the stepfather, the main star, the main character. He just got done showering and he was shaving his beard off to make himself look different, to move on, to go, to go be a part of another family and yep. try to be civilized until he gets pissed off and kills everybody else. The original is one of the best from the decade. I really think so. If it's been a watch since you've seen that one, man, definitely revisit that. Cause I think that that movie is, um, I saw like, that when I was really like, good. I saw that when I was like, 12 i remember where i watched it i don't yeah. remember much from it but yeah it's, i do it's it would have fucked me as a kid if i saw that as a kid yeah but at that point i was i was you know i was already elbow deep in yeah into really fucked up movies i had already seen hostel and you know tcm03 and stuff um yeah. and then as far as I, I always prefer to watch horror at night i don't know why i just i just do Pretty much the same. And there's Not certain a, movies yeah. that feels weird. There's certain songs that sound weird in the daytime to me. Like there's certain songs I can listen to a song and I can decide if it's a nighttime or a daytime song. Yeah. And I kind of feel the same way with horror. I feel like there's, there's some horror yeah. movies that feel right to watch at night. Certain music I cannot turn on in the morning when I'm driving to work because I'm just not in the mind space for it. Yeah. Like but to finish Jumbo's question, I love Stepfather 2. The only reason I haven't seen Stepfather 3 is because it's very hard to get on physical media. I don't even know if it has a DVD. I know it's got a VHS, but they recasted the guy, and they, they play it off as he got plastic surgery, and that's why he looks different, which I think sounds silly. But then again, it's Stepfather 3, so I, I'm sure I'd still probably like it. I don't know. I'd have to yeah. try to get my hands on it. Thank you. Good question. Permanent Pictures yeah. most looked forward to movie for the rest of 2022 non-horror most oh, looked forward to movie easy jurassic world dominion oh yeah that'd be mine too i didn't even know the fuck that's going out yep june antonis andrade andriata says what's a horror movie that goes too far with killing torture etc in your guys's opinion nothing <laughs> I, just, I guess i'll say this antonis i think that <sighs> it's already a, a subject that people don't like to watch anyway. I think that the I spit on your grave movies do go a little too far with the sexual assault. Um, those are hard for me to watch. Uh, anytime that's in a movie and I know it does serve a purpose. It's a very niche, you know, group it's an exploitation movie and, and they do serve a purpose. They're not for the faint of heart. And it's obviously not there to glorify anything. There's, 
seconds to bring certain things to your attention to remind you that shit like this happens, unfortunately. Um, but man, I, I, when I watched, I can't remember which specific I spent on your grave movie. It was, um, it was one of the newer ones. It wasn't the original. Um, it was hard for me to watch, man. I was like, shit, like this is, I don't know. I just not a fan of that. I mean, I, and I'm not very sensitive when it comes to subject matter in movies, you know? Yeah. It's all subjective to you as the viewer. You got to remember too. It's like when they put this kind of shit in movies, if it's like, I, I am so uncomfortable watching that. That's, that's what the director was intending. Your horror is supposed to elicit a feeling from you, a dark emotion from you, whether it be fear or anxiety or, or uncomfortableness. So like, that's the purpose of it. Not because some, unless you're Victor, Victor Salva, but like, it's not like to elicit feelings of, let me show you I'm a creep and I will love rape. That's not yeah. like, like death wish two has one of the most, I'd say it even rivals the I spin in your grave rape scenes has one of the most disgusting rape scenes ever. And they, they, they kill, they rape this poor woman so bad that they kill her during this rape but the fact that charles bronson gets the most uh, most insane revenge ever on this gang is like the journey you take to get there and you want to see these guys die so bad and bronson just destroys these guys so it's like it's this insane emotional journey that the film takes you i'm not saying death wish 2 is is you know green mile but like context is key and it's all you and the viewer. If that's just if you just don't want to see it, because look, I know I if you if you're listening to what I'm saying, you're like, I understand what you're saying, Christian, but still, I'm not into that. That's a different that's a different situation. But what do I think goes too far? Uh, I haven't been to that point yet where I was like, this is too far. Because to me, movies should have zero limitations in anything, because they're movies. They're not fucking real. Yeah, so, I mean, gore and torture and stuff. I have not seen a movie where I felt like. Oh, I can't handle that. No, I just haven't. Yeah, I, it, it just even hostile saw movies like none of that has gotten to the point where I'm like, I can't watch this. So and it, it gets harder and harder as we get older because the boundaries are pushed. Even <sighs> harder. Fucking, so, yeah, we're desensitized to so much. It's just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that looks like it's it. The last question was talk about Rob Zombie's monsters, which we completely already covered that. Yeah. So uh, I guess we're going to start wrapping it up. That was, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys so much for your questions. Every time, you know, this is the second time we've done an episode like this. And uh, normally this is when Christian and I are like, shit, what are we going to do this week? We don't have anything planned. <laughs> like, all right, let's Ramble. let's do one for the viewers. Yeah. Um, but we appreciate you guys sending in questions. And, uh, you know, it definitely adds for an organic and fun conversation. And it's a way to include you guys in the show, which is important to both of us so you know that you guys are our viewers and and support the show and make it worthwhile for everyone so you know thank you and uh yeah i i like i I like i like these i like these me too it felt good to just chillax and not have to argue about a series or a movie (laughs) which we'll do that again oh yeah i'm sure so all right. What do you guys think? Let us know. Let us know in the comment section below. Now, I'm not saying this would be the next one. No, because we do have a thing or two that's on the back burner that we're thinking about doing. But in the near future, let us know in the comments if you guys want to see us do a casual commentary of Freddy's Dead, because I would love to do that. That I feel like that's another movie like Resurrection that gets hated on a shitload. That would be super fun to watch with somebody, another horror fan, and oh, laugh at all the crazy zany shit in it. So, you know. All right. Yeah, sounds good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we love y'all. Thank you for listening to another week of the You Need a Horror Podcast. We'll see you next time.